Hello everybody and happy Easter. We are so glad that you came to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus today with Hosanna. Yes, and nothing beats the joy of Easter. In a few moments, we'll begin our time of worship. To get ready, if the room you're in is starting to fill up, we kindly ask that you move closer to the center of the row to make it easy for those who are still coming in to find a seat. We'd also draw your attention to the program you received when you came in. Open it up to find information about upcoming events and opportunities for you and your family to grow in faith. You'll also see information about our Easter Rise offering that we'll be receiving during today's service. Every dollar of this offering will go outside of the walls of Hosanna to support partner organizations and ministries that help people rise, including Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge. Yes, we are so grateful to have the choirs from Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge with us today to celebrate the power of the resurrection. Every one of them carries a story of moving from the darkness of addiction to new life in Christ. We'll get to hear some of those stories today and worship Jesus together with grateful hearts. And as we do, our kids will be enjoying their own Easter experience in age-appropriate environments created just for them to celebrate what Easter is all about. So find your seat and get your heart ready to worship. Happy Easter.
Yes, praise the Lord indeed. Happy Easter, everybody. Welcome to Hosanna Church. My name is Eric Pock, and I serve as the Lakeville campus pastor here, and it is wonderful to be with you, whether you're joining us here in the room or if you're joining us online, because we believe the Lord led you here to hear the good news of Jesus' resurrection. We have a great service in store for today, including an incredible choir from Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge. Can we thank them for being here? Not only do they sound amazing, but we get to hear a powerful testimony from one of them here in a little bit, so look forward to that. And then we have a great Easter message from our lead pastor, Ryan Alexander, to remind us of the importance of the resurrection for our everyday lives. But as we continue our time of worship, it's fitting to do so by stepping into the Easter story by reading out loud the account of Jesus' resurrection from the Gospel of Luke. So let's read this out loud together from the screen. Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. Two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. They asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here, he is risen from the dead. Church, that is good news. So with that truth in mind, let's continue worshiping together.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for Jesus. We recognize your presence among us, your power among us. You are alive and well and present with us. Thank you, Lord. All of this, all of our hearts, all of this time, this music, Lord, it is all for you. God, to you be the glory. Thank you, Lord, for being alive and having your presence here with us and your love and your power with us this morning. To you be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. We're going to continue to worship here in just a moment. But before we do, we've got a testimony that we want to share with you. And you can go ahead and take a seat. 
Well, everybody, it is so great to worship and to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus together. And I'm also grateful that we get to hear a powerful testimony this morning from one of our friends from Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge. And so this is Pania. Can everybody say good morning, Pania? You got a lot of people excited to hear your testimony, Pania, and I'm so grateful because it's a powerful testimony of moving from death into life. It's a great resurrection story, and yet we also know that before there's a resurrection story, there's a grave story. And so can you tell us a little bit about that part of your journey? Yes, definitely. So uh, I was born into a Christian family, and um, you know, like it says in the Bible, once you know God and you go back to darkness, it's going to be very dark. And um, when the enemy had it, a grip on me, his grip was so um, strong, I couldn't get away from it. And I, so I was um, stuck in addiction for 20 years. And for those 20 years, I lost my husband, I lost my children, I lost uh, multiple careers and jobs. and just everything I had, but most importantly, I lost my identity. And um, I lost all hope. I was hopeless every day. I woke up just mad because I woke up. Um, I wanted everything to end. I, I didn't, you know, every day I woke up, it was just, just felt like it was for nothing. Um, I didn't have nothing else to hold on to. I didn't have, you know, any motivation to do anything. I just lived in darkness, even though, you know, it's sun shining outside, and in my world, it was so dark, um, spiritually empty, um, just existing every day, um, not even living, and um, just knowing that, you know, everything I had worked for my mar- in my marriage was gone. I found my identity in my marriage, and when that, when that was done, it, I was so lost. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredibly painful to walk through, Pania, and I think you articulate what a grave story feels like, a sense of loss, of life, of, of marriage, of careers, jobs. I mean, that's so much of what we experience in the grave, but praise the Lord that he didn't leave you there, did he? Yes. He gave you a great, powerful resurrection story, and so can you tell us a little bit about how your faith in Jesus and even your walk through adult and a Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge has transformed your life and, and what you're walking in now. Tell yeah. us a bit about that journey. Yeah, so before I came here, um, March uh, 2023, um, I was totally hopeless. I had no more desire to go on living. So I called a friend and um, I told him and he was like, well, let me pray for you. And he prayed for me, and by the grace of God, I was arrested that day, and that arrest saved my life. Um, And while I was in jail at my darkest, lowest point, God met me there, and he, I signed up to go to a Bible study, and when I walked into those room, that room, um, the pastor that was there, uh, his name's Pastor Steve, he just had this presence of the Lord and the Holy Spirit just oozing out of him. And um, I wanted that. I wanted that. And so I applied for a um, adult and teen challenge, and um, I was approved to, to go. And so I went to court, and the judge denied me. He said that I was a failure, that I was never going to make it out in the society that was a menace to society. I would never change and that if I was going to change, I would have changed a long time ago. And so the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that little hope that I got from Pastor Steve was destroyed that day. I went back to my cell and I cried. And the Holy Spirit prompted me. He said, open your Bible. So I did. And when I did, it, it was Matthews 19, 26. It says, humanly, it is impossible. But with God, everything's possible. Yeah, And so um, I meditated on that scripture, and I prayed on that scripture every day until my next court date. And when I entered, before I went into the courtroom, I said a little prayer. I said, Lord, please show up for me in this courtroom. And I promise I would show up every single day 
rain, snow, whatever it is, whether I want to or not, I will be here, right? And so um, when I walked into those courtroom, it was a whole different judge. And come to find out that judge, two weeks prior to my court day, his son had passed away from um, drug overdose. And so he was letting people go and get, giving people a second chance to go to treatment. And here I am today at Adult and Teen Challenge. And, um, and you know, I, God has confirmed that this is where I needed to be because um, shortly after I got into long term um, at Adult and Teen Challenge, I went on a choir trip similar to this one and Pastor Steve was there at that church. And he just, he was so happy to see the change and what God has done in my life. And, um, and you know, I just want to encourage you all that, you know, um, I have a quote. It says, um, you know, the stronger, the greater the, the struggle, the stronger the triumph. And God's going to use all of my darkness for his light and his glory. And I just encourage, hold on, breakthroughs and strongholds are gonna happen. Amen, yeah, that is so beautiful and a powerful story. And Pania, we as a church, we're rejoicing alongside your friend, Pastor Steve, because yes. of the good news of what Jesus has done in your life and will continue to do. So thank you for blessing us with your testimony. Thank you. And uh, church, we're going to continue to sing about a God who doesn't just change lives thousands of years ago. He continues to change our lives still today. He is our living hope. And so let's stand together and sing one final song. And can we thank Pania again for her powerful testimony. Church, let's worship. Easter. Anybody else? And I'm with you guys. 
Before you're seated, would you greet a couple people around you and say, Happy Easter, I'm glad you're here. Hello, church, and happy Easter. We are so grateful to have the wonderful folks from Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge with us today. Each one carries a powerful story of resurrection, and we want to make it possible for many more of these stories to be told. That's why every dollar of Hosanna's Easter Rise offering is going out the door with a significant portion supporting Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge and their partner ministry in the nation of Haiti, Haiti Teen Challenge. Your generous giving will help countless individuals rise out of the pit of addiction, a pit I've personally experienced, and step into the light of new life in Christ. Check out your program to learn more. You can give using the QR code or through the Hosanna app or website. The offering closes at midnight on Easter. Let's give generously to help people rise. Happy Easter, everyone. Yeah, happy Easter, everybody. My name is Ryan Alexander. So glad you've joined us at all of our campuses, live or later online, and from whatever sunny spring break destination you are joining us from right now. We believe the Lord led you here. And I'm gonna invite the ushers to come forward to receive your Easter Rise offering gifts. And if there's ever a time to give big to help people in need, this is it. We've got the living, breathing examples from Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge here, and we know that times are desperate in Haiti. So all the information on how to give, where to give, is in your program or on the screen. Well, something new in our house this year, uh, Jen, my wife, Pastor Jen here at Hosanna, started baking bread. And it's really good, all right? It's, it's gotten to the point where it's really good. But like anything new, in the early stages, there's a bit of a trial and error period. <laughs> So occasionally the bread would come out in those early days and the, the crust would be like as hard as a rock and the inside would be very gooey, all right? When I say hard as a rock, like you needed a chainsaw to cut through that thing. That's how hard it was and gooey, it was like the texture, even tastes a little bit of Elmer's glue, just to give you an idea. Uh, it's, gotten, it's gotten much better, it's really good now. Uh, make sure I'm on the record saying that. But, but in the early days, it would be hard in the exterior and soft, too soft on the inside. I, I heard someone say once that Christians, followers of Christ, especially because of today, should have firm centers and soft edges. Should have firm centers and soft edges. I like that. It reminds me of Jesus. It reminds me of a whole lot of you, actually. Firm centers, that we are anchored deep in Christ. We can stand firm when the storm and the chaos rages around us and, and life happens in ways that we didn't expect. We can stand firm, firm center. We have this unshakable, immovable faith, firm center. And then soft edges that were loving and humble and gentle, compassionate, open, adaptable. Uh, we're able to absorb some of those hard edges that are, that are coming our way because we've got soft edges. But isn't it true these days, there's a whole lot of the opposite going on out there? Kind of hard edges, kind of like Jen's bread in the early days. Hard edges that just are harsh, divisive. Here's the thing about hard edges. Hard edges are always a result of something soft inside of us. If we have a hard edge, it's a result of something soft, a soft spot inside of us, a tender spot, a hurting spot. It's like that hard edge is protecting something soft inside of us. And it's usually a fear, a fear that's causing that hard edge. And all fears, all fears that we experience in life can be traced back to two core fears, really two core fears in the human experience. And usually we each... Identify with one over the other based on how we're wired. The two core fears of the human experience fitting for today are fear of dying and its close cousin, a fear of not fully living. <laughs> Even as I share those, one of them probably does something inside of you and is kind of telling you that's the one. Fear of dying is about separation, the ultimate separation of death, but every other way we can be separated from people we love. Fear of not fully living or somehow my life not being significant enough. But here, here's the good news. 
of Easter. The resurrection addresses both of those core fears head on, head on. And in doing so, strengthens our, our center and therefore softens our edges. 2,000 years ago, a guy named Paul encountered the resurrected Christ. And he went from being a guy who had a pretty soft center and some hard edges to being a guy who had a very firm center and soft edges. In fact, after Easter, we're gonna do a series called A Resurrected Life, and we're gonna look at what a resurrected life looks like through the life of Paul. But here's what Paul said to the the early Christians living in the city of Corinth, 1 Corinthians 15, verse one. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, there's a soft edge, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you will stand firm in it, firm center. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. Paul's saying, good news, and if you're new to Hosanna, Uh, This is a year of good news. 2024 is a year of good news. No matter what you're hearing out there, no matter what you're hearing in here in your head, no matter what's going on in your life, you're gonna hear good news every weekend. It'll bring you hope and strength for your life, no matter what's happening. Paul's saying, if you believe this good news, you will stand firm. You will have a firm center and therefore softer edges. But if you don't, you won't. So what is this good news then that if we believe gives us a firm center? Paul goes on to give this basic summary of the good news. He says, Jesus died, he came, I should say, he came, he died, and he rose. He came, he died, and he rose. He came as a human, he became human. God becomes human and enters into the human experience. He died out of God's great love for humanity, for you and me. He sacrificially gave his life to destroy the walls that separate us from God, separate walls like sin and pride and shame. The cross destroys all of that. And then he rose again and defeated the giants of death and fear, including those core fears of, of separation and insignificance. Paul says, if you believe that, you will stand firm. You'll have a firm center. Softer edges, if you believe that. It's not always so easy to believe, though, is it? I mean, we can believe that someone was born and someone died, but someone someone rose again? It was hard to believe then. It's hard now. Paul was addressing some of those questions that people had about this. In 1 Corinthians 15, he uses two examples from nature that are hard to believe but also hard to deny. First of all, he talks about the stars. He says, our resurrection bodies were raised will be like the stars in terms of their brilliance and their unending nature. Do you know that there are 10,000 stars in the universe to every one grain of sand on this planet? Hard to get our heads around, but also hard to deny the reality of it. And then he talks about seeds, seeds that go into the ground and somehow become this new creation and break through the ground again and grow into something new. He says the resurrection's like this. Verse 42, it is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die, but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies that will be like the stars in their brilliance and their unending nature. Paul here is saying now with seeds, they enter the ground. The seed enters the ground, it dies, and then it comes back through the ground breaks through the ground and becomes this new creation. A new creation. Hard to get our heads around. How does this happen? And yet it happens over and over and over and over again. It was about to start happening a whole lot here in Minnesota and then we got all the snow that we missed out on this past winter, right? But it's coming. Those plants are coming. Hard to get our heads around. And then Paul says earlier in 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus is the first seed to be raised of a great harvest of seeds that will come. His resurrection is the first seed 
and many more will follow. Jesus himself in John 12 says, unless a seed, unless a kernel of wheat dies and falls to the ground, it, not, it cannot produce many more seeds and many more lives, many more resurrected lives that will break through the ground. Jesus is the first seed that dies and it leads to many, 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 like this endless nature of stars in the universe, lives to be raised. Hard to get our heads around. About as hard as it is to get our heads around an acorn that's a seed that dies. But as that seed dies, it possesses the potential to become 10 million oak trees. Hard to get our heads around, but hard to deny when you see a forest of oak trees. The resurrection of Jesus, admittedly, is hard to get our heads around, but it's not any harder to get our heads around than, than stars and seeds. And it's hard to get our heads around, but, but it's also increasingly hard to deny the reality of. You know, God's word tells us that he's placed eternity in every human heart. Eternity is in you. It's in you. Every human civilization from the beginning of time has had a belief in an afterlife. God, through Jesus Christ, shows us what it looks like. Just shows us what it looks like. Here, Paul goes on in verse 53. says, for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. This, this is the good news of the resurrection. That Jesus came and he died and he rose again. He, he died and in dying he destroyed the walls of sin and, and pride and shame that separate us from him. And then he rose again victoriously destroying the giants of fear, separation, insignificance. He came out of the grave and defeated death. So what? Well, Paul answers that question too here in Verse 58, so my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable, firm center. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, soft edges. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Because of the resurrection, the resurrection addresses these core fears head on in a way that strengthens our core, softens our edges. Let's talk about the first one, the fear of dying. And Paul says, death is swallowed up in victory. In verse 26 in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Because of the resurrection, we don't have to fear death. Death is not the end. It's just the beginning. And when we live from that place and from the hope of eternity, it gives us a very firm center. But in order to live from that place, we have to accept the reality of our mortality. We have to accept that this body is dying and it must in order to become a resurrection body. They say there are two things that we can count on in life. What are they? Death and taxes. Some of you need the, needed that second reminder. You're welcome this time of year. <laughs> of the two core fears, this is the one that I get pulled into. Fear of death, fear of separation. A couple years ago, I was really wrestling with this, my mortality, it's an existential moment. I was actually in Israel, and I was sitting on the Mount of Olives, reflecting on all of this, and I could see the very places where Jesus wrestled with his own mortality, and Jesus gave up his life, his mortal life. And I journaled there, facing it head on. I will die someday, by accident, tragedy, disease, or old age. Suddenly or slowly, I will breathe my last, my body will be lifeless. My remains will be gathered and my loved ones who remain will gather. Death is a certainty. The details are a mystery. Focusing on details has a way of making us lifeless even when we're not. Accepting the certainty makes each moment a gift, life more full than less. 
The hope of salvation is nothing but talk until one has accepted that death will eventually knock. Only a once lifeless body can be gathered again and live on. Try as we might, worry as we may, we cannot change this. We can only accept, even embrace it, and then choose the basis from which to live on. One day, suddenly or slowly, my body will become lifeless. Until then, may the basis from which I live lead to more life, not less. For me, Jesus has always led to more, way more life than less. I'm gonna keep following him. He'll show you the way from Bethany to Bethpage, from the Mount of Olives to Mount Calvary, from the Garden of Gethsemane to a garden with a very empty tomb. In order to live from this firm center place and the hope of eternity along the way, we've got to accept the reality of our mortality. But when we do, on the other side of that is a very empty tomb. And then on the other side of that is a life that is more brilliant than the stars, more unending than the stars. So then we have to decide, are we gonna walk away from the empty tomb or toward it? And I'm telling you, the more you walk toward that empty tomb, as hard as it is to get our heads around the resurrection, the more you walk toward the empty tomb, the, the harder it gets to deny the reality of it. And when you live from that place, that firm center place, you can start to be like Paul who says, if I live, it's to honor the Lord. If I die, it's to honor the Lord. Live or die, I'm still with the Lord. In other words, he's saying, live or die, either way, we win. He also writes in, in, in Romans, nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, nothing. Well, that's a firm center place. Reminds me of my friend, Pastor Julio Volsi, He's in Haiti. His ministry will be one of the recipients of this Easter Rise offering. This is what he has to wear when he goes out right now. This country is being run by gangs. This fall, a gang tried to kidnap him during a Sunday morning worship service. His family's in Florida because it's just not safe for them to be there. But he's still there. Why? Because he's saying, if I live, it's to honor the Lord. If I die, it's to honor the Lord. Nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That is a firm center place. And when we, we no longer live driven by the fear of death and separation, then we can start to really live, like fully live, which leads to the second core fear. This isn't mine, so I don't have as much to say about it. It's Jen's, and she'll talk about it more next week. But the fear of not fully living, insignificance. Did you hear Paul in verse 58? Nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Nothing. In other words, nothing we do in the Lord for the Lord is insignificant. Nothing's useless. It means it's all useful. He uses it all. So even those moments when we fall and we fail, even those moments when we feel insignificant, yeah, especially those moments. That's the message of the resurrection. The crucifixion, which seemed like the biggest fall, the most insignificant moment in history, three days later, becomes the resurrection, the biggest rise, the most significant event in history, the greater the struggle, the greater the triumph. This is what God does. He doesn't waste a thing. He doesn't waste a hurt or a hardship or a failure. We have living, breathing examples in front of us. Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge, he's using everything that has happened in their lives up to this point to bring healing and transformation and purpose. Their lives are literally breaking through the ground, this new life to reveal their unique purpose. Thank you for being such great examples for us, Minnesota Dalton Teen Challenge. God isn't wasting a thing. And living for significance in this world will never lead you to significance. Only the resurrection, knowing that you are this significant, that God loved you this much and he has this much power, that's where significance comes from. And knowing that he can use everything in our lives to do something significant. So pastorally, I just wanna close by asking you, and I'm asking myself too, where are your rough edges, hard edges? Because those are, those are a gift. They point us to the soft spots inside of us, those tender spots, those fears. And then we can begin to ask God to do what only he can do to break through those hard edges and bring healing and strength and restoration. 
because I'm just, I'm going to shoot straight with you, and I, I'm talking to myself as much as anybody. We don't need more people in this world with soft insides and hard edges. We especially don't need Christians with soft insides and hard edges. We need people who look more and more like Jesus, who had a firm center and the softest of edges. And here's the other bit of truth for you, and this is for you. You don't need to live one more day with those hard edges and soft spot inside of you. It's hurting you and it's hurting other people around you. And again, just keep going with this <laughs> straight talk. It's not gonna change by just sitting there for an hour on Easter and then just living your life like you always have. It's gonna require taking a step toward Jesus, a step toward the empty tomb. Maybe you're new to this faith journey and you're ready to take that first step and say yes to Jesus for the first time. You will never regret that decision. It will be the best decision you've ever made and will ever make. Some of you are new to Hosanna and you're going, okay, I, I, I wanna keep going. I wanna keep you know, softening those edges and strengthening my center. And so what's my next step? We'd love to know who you are. Let us know, just text Hosanna new, new to 94000. We won't bombard you with emails or ask for your social security number, I promise. But we will reach out to you and come alongside you. Wherever you are in your faith journey, maybe it's this church, some other church, take that next step toward the empty tomb because when you do that, you're taking a step away from soft center, hard edges, and taking a step toward firm center, soft edges. And it's all possible because of the resurrection. It's all possible because of the resurrection. Because Jesus came, he died, he rose, he de destroyed the walls that separate us, he defeated the giants, and he makes it possible for us to live with a firm center, soft edges. May the basis from which you live your life from here always lead you to more life, not less. Would you stand so I can pray for you? Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for dying. Thank you for rising again. Thank you for the resurrection that addresses those core fears of, of separation and insignificance, Lord. And you show us what it means that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That all things are significant in your kingdom and that we are made significant, that our identity is in being a, a child of God who has been set free and raised to new life that we are already significant in you. So from here, may the steps we take lead us to more life, not less. Thank you, Jesus, for making it possible. We pray this in your name and all God's people said, amen. amen. Jesus is risen. Let's worship him. Let's worship him.
Praise God, this is our God, this is what he does. He saves us. We are so grateful for that truth and the fact that we got to celebrate it together. And once again, as Pastor Ryan said, if you're new here, we would love to walk with you on that faith journey closer to that empty grave. And you can find more information about how you can connect more here at Hosanna through that program you received as you came in, where you will also find information about how you can give towards Hosanna's Easter Rise offering. All of that money goes outside of the walls of the church to bless partner ministries and organizations to help people rise out of hopelessness, addiction, and uh, just fear. And so it is a great thing to give towards, so thank you for living generously. And because it's been such a great morning of worship, can we once again thank Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge, their choir, for being here with us. Absolutely incredible, so wonderful to worship with them. Thank you, friends, for leading us today. Now, before you leave, let me leave you with this ancient blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may he look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Great to worship with you, church, and happy Easter.